the sewing show that goes into detail of all the tools, techniques, uh, fabrics, or whatever comes up on the Great British Sewing Bee each week. And we do that because we have a little more time than the show has uh, on the Sewing Bee. Uh, and we do that also because we have Master Taylor Couturier, Carol Elaine with us to help us along. Hey, Carol again. Hi, hello, Stuart. Week seven. I know, lingerie and sleepwear week. <laughs> yes. did, did that, what, what, what do you thought of lingerie? Did you think, nah, they can't? All that, that's it's just too, too finicky. <laughs> I know, I was surprised at this challenge because it, this is a big ask, I think. Tiny pieces, you know, and they, the, the shapes are foreign. Yes. They don't, they don't yeah. Look, they don't look like how they go together. Do you know what I mean? Ab absolutely. But I suppose you could say, because we're on week seven, one week before the quarterfinals, maybe the challenges start Get Well, I say start. We had a Parker earlier, didn't we? We had a, a patchwork quilt. So I, don't, I think they're already hard. But this was going to certainly be a challenge. Um, so we've decided to focus on Obviously, that that sort of idea of uh, the of the lace and the, and the, the 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 bra, basically, isn't it? Yes, and how you build them. Yeah. So you have stretch lace, you have a lining, and you have elastic, and all those three components are fiddly, and they have properties of their own. They're not fixed. And then you're using bias sections of lace, which are already stretchy, and then the same goes for the lining matching those up, those two have to, to, to go together, but they, in a way they're competing fabrics. And then you add the elastic. So I think it is a notch above the challenge. And you wouldn't necessarily think that right away because they're tiny garments. Mm. But therein lies that deceptive difficulty. Yeah. Well, viewers, you're going to love this this program this week because because of that challenge, Carol has knocked it out of the park with the videos and the tutorials. We have six short videos of stunning, uh, well, technique and analysis on how to do all those sections that we saw the sewers do. So dealing with elastic and yes, that bra. So should we start from the beginning then? Because um, I think Deborah said this and maybe even Christian, but I definitely heard Deborah say, I've never worked with elastic before. Yeah. Absolutely. And I found that quite a surprise really. Yes. I, I wonder how the, the pattern was explaining itself, you know, because I saw them cut a section of elastic and then how did they instruct them to put mm. that elastic in and, and how to measure it out so that you ended up with an even spacing? I, we don't know, do we? No, no, no. But that, for me, the, the only, I'm not, I've not worked with elastic, and I suppose it depends on what you make. The only kind of correlation I can think of is when I was doing my neck band on my jersey t-shirt, there is that element of, of the, the neck band is a different length to the circumference of the, the, the actual neck. And, and when you're sewing it down, you do have to pull a little, don't you, to, to get it right. And, so there, yes. there is some sort of mathematics there. Exactly. It's, it's kind of the same principle, although you're using the same fabrics. One is cut it, it differently to the other. Except you can use bias section. You, because it's jersey, you can cut it on the straight. But you're right. You are asking a smaller section to stretch onto a larger section. That eases the whole thing in, and it controls it. And you end up with a really nice, pleasant um, finish that hugs hugs the body, which is just what the knickers were, were doing, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, Carol has prepared video one for us, where this literally is the what would you say the, the is, you call it the one oh one of elastic. <laughs> I think that's very good. That's very and good. It literally just. It cannot be any clearer on how to take your piece of elastic, like the, the sewers had to do, uh, and place it on top of the stretch lace, if it was the knicker, um, and and the whole idea of, of, of pins. Take a look at these and, and the placement of the pins, and you'll be, you'll be cruising with putting elastic on. I wanted to talk a little bit about how to set up 
a stretch elastic and apply it to a stretch lace, and how to calculate the gathering ratio for the project that you're working on. So here I have a stretch lace. It's got a little bit of a rubber band applied to it for, to, to, to grab the body a bit. And I have a piece of stretch lace. Okay, this is a tool with an embroidered pattern on it. Now, if you look at my pins here, I've set up in this 12 inch span, I've set up a set of ratios, which we're going to talk about now. So if I'm going to apply this, lay, this elastic onto the lace at a ratio of 100%, not, not much is happening. If I change the ratio by pulling 10% away, which leaves me 90% of elastic to 100% of lace, you can see that this gathering ratio is going to give you just a light ripple of gathers. If we go to 80%, you can see what happens. A lot more gathering, a lot more ripple effect. And let's just have a look at 70, which may not be a good move, but you may want something like a very heavily gathered elastic waistline to go over the hip, so you're going to need more fullness. So 70% might work for you. I'm going to show you now how to apply this elastic, and we're going to use the 80% ratio. We're going to be working right here. So I'll be right back once I've sorted this all out. Right, so there we go. So look at that 70% ratio or 80% ratio. It's just I, I, watching you pulling it that down, trying it at that ratio and that ratio just made so much sense. You could see the gathers getting yes. more and more for whichever ratio you wanted or whatever exactly. garment you were doing. Exactly right. So if you're making, let's say you're making a big full skirt and you want an elastic waist on it and you, so you want a lot of gathers because you want the waist to feel secure, but then you have to accommodate the hip and then you want a bit of tolerance. So you need a bit more gathering, don't you? Mm. So then you might go to 70%. But if you're just, if you want a tiny bit of ease, like maybe the knicker elastic along, around the leg, well, that might be 85, 90%, because you don't want any rippling. You want it to lie flat. Yes. Just make your test samples. Yeah. You know, have a look at the results, make your decision, and then quarter it out, space it out. And that was the other thing, where you put the pins in on your actual fabric in half and then in half again, and then doing it on your elastic, your chosen percentage, and then halving it and... So when you watch this next video now of Carol sewing it actually down on a machine, it's just it, you, so easy. You'll be, you'll be sewing elastic all the time now. Take a look at this. Oh, enjoy. So we've decided that we want to gather a 12 inch section of lace into an 80% section of elastic. So we've got 12 inches here and we've got just over nine and a half of elastic to stretch on to the 12 inches of lace. So the first thing I've done is I've set this up in quarters. So I've divided the lace into three inch sections. So I've got three, six, nine, and 12. I'm going to do the same thing with the elastic. I've got just over nine and a half inches and I've divided this in four, first in half and then each half in half again. Now what is left to do is to sew this on. Now I'm just going to do this freehand. You can pin this in place and you can take a lot more time. I'm just going to show you how this is done and I'm going to I'm going to do two rows of stitching but I'm going to start on the top edge. Okay so I've got a bit of a decorative edge on the top of this elastic. I'm going to start with one back stitch. Now I'm using a gathering stitch. I'm using a long stitch and I'm loosening my tension just a bit. So I'm going to start with one back stitch and then I'm going to take a couple of stitches and then having this locked in place, I'm going to now start stitching 
by gathering the lace in, stretching the lace on to the tool lace. Okay, now you can see you've got some room for adjustment here. So you can just go at a good pace. Take your pins out as you go. Don't run over a pin. So you see everything's locked in place. 80% is a good ratio because it doesn't put a whole lot of tension onto the lace. I'm staying close to the edge of the lace. Stop with the needle down. Now we're on our third section. Get rid of our pins. And then we're at the final section now. Let's give that lace a little tug. Make sure everything is parallel. Edge of lace, edge of elastic. And we're going to end with a back stitch. Okay, so we're half done. And there we are. You see, just a subtle lace. Now this is this would be good for say the leg of a of a pair of um, underpants or a bra or a light elastic waist. Now, if you've got some of this on the edge, you can always trim that off when you're finished. But the important thing is, is that the elastic is secured to the lace. Then you don't have any runoff. Now let's just align this again and do a nice edge stitch on the edge of the elastic. Now everything is in place, so we can just relax into this. Make sure you're, that your lace is pulled through, that you're not getting anything caught up in the end, under the elastic. And then just follow with your eye, use your presser foot, and keep stretching. Guide it all through. Always let the machine do the work. And there we are. And nicely done. That's your 80% ratio. Now I wanted to say just a quick word about unpicking. If something goes wrong and you need to unpick, what I would do, and now we're working black on black, so this is going to be very difficult for me to see, um, but what I would suggest is that you find your stitch and then you pull out, say, every third stitch. You just, with your unpicker, now you see that's working quite well. But because we've used a longer stitch, it's not fighting and it's, it's cooperating quite well. So there you go. If you run into trouble, you can just unpick this easy because number one we've used a longer stitch and number two you're selecting every two or three stitches so you now you're in position now to to correct anything you've done wrong so there we are we've got an 80 percent ratio of gather and that looks quite nice Oh, see, look at that. It, it takes all the guesswork of, am I pulling too tight? Am I not pulling enough? Like, I used to be on my, my, my neck band. It's like, ooh. Those <laughs> pins just helped, helped keep everything in. I pull, I match my pin up, my pin up, done. It, kept, it keeps all even, doesn't it? It does. It keeps it really even. So you don't have too many gathers on one side and not enough on the other. It, it regulates it. Absolutely, yeah. at the same, you know, proportion. So, and and what, what I appreciate about that video as well, even though I know, uh, and I know that we never assume people's learning here. We 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 just say it as it is. But what what I found fascinating with that is I could see actually what was happening. You know, sometimes when you're doing something, I don't actually know what I'm doing. I, uh, someone's teaching me to do this and I'm doing it. But actually that video just made it suddenly all clear. I see what's happening. I understand what's happening. And I know what the end effect is going to be. That it just was something so simple. And I know this is probably bread and butter for you. You probably think, well, th this, but actually it, that was so, so helpful, Carol. I'm... I'm glad you said the word what is well the phrase what is happening because to me that's really more important than showing someone a finished result it's it's 
showing people what is going, what's going on and how you achieve that end result. You don't really have to, really the, the, the really hard bit is in comprehending really what's going to, what's going on. Absolutely. And, yeah. and that's really important to me. These are the things that I really miss about the sewing bee. And this is, this goes all the way back. This is years now in the making where you and I had that first conversation about, wouldn't it be nice if we could take some of the mis the, the frustration mm. out of this and yeah. just show yeah. simply how to do something. Yeah. And that doesn't, always mean you have to show the finished result it doesn't it's no, this no. is actually what you're doing this is how this is the path forward to that and you make it your own but as long as you understand the fundamentals of mm. ratio percentages and and that you have a choice it's your decision in the end you you, you pick what, which you know you pick what ratio you want yeah you know and and this is where as a, my teaching hat comes on again uh, and as a student, do you know, when I was learning maths at school, I, I absolutely hated it because it was always out of a, an exercise book uh, or, or, or a teacher just drawing uh, a, a mathematical things, especially with ratio. I can remember that. Um, and, and, and to be a good teacher, they would often say, well, try and, try and teach what you're doing, but using modern day examples or real examples. Now, learning ratio would have been so much easier and more understandable if I'd learned it like watching your video there. That those with two elastic, two, yes, exactly. Two with the elastic, videos just made that whole idea of ratio just go. Ah, I understand. I understand the principle. It would have made it a lot more interesting at school as well. Doing it that way. That, I mean, that's fascinating. That there, you're teaching math, but you use a you use a completely other discipline, sewing, to teach a mathematical that's formula. Really, that's really that's really fascinating. And, and I think I, I think people respond sometimes better to pictures, don't they? Oh, or, absolutely. Or a story. Yeah. 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 Uh, and any, any time I do elastic now, or if I'm going to make, because I wouldn't mind making some sports shorts uh, yeah. Yeah. for me to wear at the gym, I will just go to that video tutorial to, as a reminder on, on how to get my elastic. I don't really need anything else, do I? No, you don't. And the thing is, with sports shorts, you can put in enough elastic that you're happy with, and you can also put in a, a drawstring cord to refine that fit. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't have to be fixed. So you might say, okay, I want this is my the hip girth I want because I'm running. You know, yeah. I'm doing a yeah. lot. I'm doing a lot of stride with with wearing this garment. So I don't want the waist too tight, but I may on certain days want it tighter than other days or I yeah. you know yeah because uh, I might so, so, I might have my phone in the pocket so therefore there it's know. playing down yeah. a bit more yeah. yes exactly yeah. exactly oh. so. well there we are so that's that's viewers there's still more videos that's that's just elastic covered um on, on the knickers idea or, or any garment now we're going to move on to the bra and I we can see it there ready <laughs> it's all ready and I had this little sundress and I thought well, it's not a bra, but it has the elements. You yes. Know, it, yes. It has, and this is a two part, but it has vertical seams across the bus point where I think we had horizontal seams in the sewing bee. It's, just, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. You're putting very, very small, weird looking shapes together <laughs> to, to get a sculpture over a bus line. Yeah. And, and a lot of the comments were, well, this is for a very small busted woman. It, the, the mannequins are you know, very, this, the cup is very small. As the cup gets larger, and this is a fascinating thing about the industry, because when you, you're making an A or a B cup or a C cup, there's a certain, you know, costing that you work out. Once you go into a D or an E cup, it, the costing goes then much higher. Really? So it costs much more to do that because lace is expensive and the, and the, the power net or the, the underlay is expensive. And making and making a bra bigger, the, the 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 function of cost grows much higher as you get to a larger cup size. And the industry, so that's just a mm. little tip about how the industry works. Um, but anyway, we were working with almost a flat mannequin, weren't we? Yeah. So um, so but that that 
you're, you're right, though, with construction, and we've often talked about this. If you've never made anything like that before, the, the brain is going to struggle at computing. How does that, and I think Christian said that, I've never made this before. I don't fully understand the, the construction of this because it's not just flat, is it? As you we said, it's that 3D element. And I know in patchwork, sewing curves, when, when you do, you know, that, and we have the, the mountain and the hill together, yes. the valley, sorry, the mountain yes. and the valley, I can't yes. do it. When, right. you put, when you put those raw, raw right sides together, it, it, it doesn't look right, does it even? No. So, so no. the construction of a, of a, of a bra is, is similar. It's these curves that don't fit together and it's, it's yeah. hard. It's very, it's alien to what all other shapes that you Good are point. used to looking at. It, it is. And then when you write, absolutely correct what you said, when you put right sides together and, and, and one is just, you know, <laughs> yes. it's got a big V in it and the other yes. one is flat. You think, what on earth? How is this going to work out? Um, but it does. And then you have to cope with that the mirror image of it. Oh, well, you know me and Miriam. You have to go the opposite way. Let's go back to basics with our first video. It's so <laughs> exactly. what? It was that. You left yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, let's go into the first video that you prepared for us, um, where we literally look at sculpturing and we look at uh, the, 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 the day, is it the day dress that we call it? It's a sundress. Oh, sundress, big yeah. one, yeah. And we're looking at that sort of just the half and that, that sculpturing and that construction, construction of it. So take a look at this. One of the problems with working in lingerie is that you're having to cope with some very small pieces. And these pieces have shapes which aren't easily recognizable, but they each have built-in ease to form sculpture. And in this case, sculpture over the bus line. So here's a toile of a little sundress that I made, which I think goes some way to explain how you might approach these tricky problems. So I'm gonna show you the pattern. Here's the pattern for the center front panel. Here's the pattern for the side front panel. Okay, so you can see what goes underneath the bus line. And here we have the pattern piece for the side front cup. And then here, finally, is the piece for the center front cup. Now it's hard to see how all these flat pattern pieces are going to be sewn together to create this sculpture. But I want to concentrate just on the cup. So let's apply this again. This is the side front, and this is the center front. Now looking at them flat, this is how they fit together. This is how the notches are placed together. So you can see what happens when they're flat, and then what has to happen when they're sewn together. And it's very easy to get things confused if you don't put them the right way around. So I think when you're working with lingerie, it's very important to understand how things are gonna lay out because you're going to mirror it again on this side. So when doing this, and I even get confused sometimes, what I realized is if I'm using the, the left front cup, there's a point on the bottom the center front cup has a point on the top. So I just set that into my mind that when I'm putting these two shapes together, I wanted to get it right first time, so I just remembered that. The point for the side front is on the bottom, and the point for the center front is on the top. Now let's look how this is going to be sewn together when we apply it on top of the lace. Wow, look at that. Those, those notches on those cardboard, when, when you put them together, suddenly we've got a 3D problem. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, That's, it's magic, isn't it? <laughs> or it looks like magic. But you, you build in the ease, and then you, then you have to set the notches where you want them. Yeah. Uh, part of the sewing is flat. 
part of the sewing is eased in and you have to control that with those notches. So I mean, when I interlocked them, as you saw, oh. it wasn't exactly on the seam line, but it, it went some way to show you how it all went together. And, anyway. and that's, remember what we said, it's about what's happening. And I was able to watch that and go, Oh, I, I see what's going to happen. And if I was going to get confused, I could just go to my cardboard little um, pattern pieces and do that just to remind me of what is going to happen. Because it, it, as you say, it's alien putting those weird curves together when you're sewing. I know the shapes that don't marry up until mm. you put them together. And I think that it just laying things out in symmetry, yeah. you know, so... I think in the sewing bee, I think there were three pieces for the bra cup. I'm not quite sure, but you just have to set them all up, line them up, and then put the underlays under them until you're kind of building the bra on the flat. Yeah. And then you can start assembling it, you know. And it, it, sometimes you even have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, put numbers under the, under, underneath, you know, so you know you've got that, that, that row. Yeah. And you know that you have to do six things, and but they're going to be married in thirds, and and just oh, in these could... things, they've got you've got to do that to help yourself. Yeah. And then and then with practice, you you know if you do if you tackle something like this bra and knicker set, then making a shirt's going to be a bit easier. Isn't it just <laughs> you can you can really understand what Christian was going through when he's like. I, I don't understand the construction. You're reading a two-dimensional pattern. You 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 can't like go to YouTube and and watch someone suddenly do it and you go, oh, I see how that's going to pop out. You, it's hard sometimes reading a two-dimensional pattern, isn't it? Where you've only got a picture. A very very picture. much so. Yes, and then because the pieces are so small and they're triangles, they yeah. all you know the sides almost look equal. Yeah. Well. One side is a bit longer, yeah. but if you don't understand where that longer side goes and how it fits in, then the shapes start looking the same. And it's very easy to turn one the wrong way, which is, I think, might be what happened to Jill uh, when she was putting her bra together because she ended up with an excess and then she had to pleat it. Now, that, that was interesting to me. I thought, well, how did that happen? It was, it, it was too much of an error to happen if she just stretched something too oh, much. Right, okay. Something went... Wait, I see. Something must have gone the wrong way. And this, whilst we're just talking about that, let's just say hats off, full admiration for Jill. To do that, to make a bra with these tiny small pieces is going to be hard enough for... for for sewers with two hands she's doing it with one hand alone and trying to control it with with the end of her other hand, arm isn't she yes. Phenomenal. yeah I, I, I know i was intrigued with jill and how she had to remake the method for doing things she came she has been coming up with different ways making uh, compensatory moves yeah. to, to 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 control the fabric because it's about leverage it's about you know, using both hands and and stretching yeah. and and making tension in the in the work with two hands. But and when you're doing that, you're level. Your hands are level. But I was thinking she doesn't have that, so she's asking half her arm to do what her full arm does. Yeah. And I thought well, certainly that side of the body is shortened. Then um, and and how does that work out? How does she sit? It it, it, it intrigued me, and and I. I was fascinated by how she had to reinvent ways to coordinate yeah. her, her work. It, it was intriguing to me. And that's, you know, all credit to her and, and, and also what amazes us about the human body, how you adapt yeah. when some part of your body is impaired somehow. And we often hear that with people who go deaf, don't we, that um, they're, or no, when they're blind, they're, their hearing becomes more, the yes. body adapts, yeah. and yes. she has adapted to find new ways and still does it. She hasn't, she hasn't given up, she hasn't stopped doing it because you, you've lost an arm. She's found those new ways. It's 
phenomenal to watch, wasn't it? It, it is interesting. And I, I, I will say that a lot of my students come to me and they, they have motion problems or light problems, dyspraxia, dyslexia. Okay, or, yes, yes. Yeah, and, and so they can't ride a bike. You know, they, 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 don't, they can't catch a ball. Yeah. Um, but they have an intense um, relationship with sculpture. Wow. And, and they can excel in that where they, they don't read well or things like that. So I've been a part of this, you know, helping people that have a finer uh, tuned sense of other skills because something is shut down or is not yeah. developed. Yeah. And um, all I can say is that, um, you know, sewing is, is quite, um, it's, it's, a really, it's a refuge for, for some people, mm. that, you know. Yeah. It completely understand completely yeah. get it yeah um so let's go on then to the next video where you're you're on the table and you're putting the pattern pieces out aren't you and you show us yeah. the base and the basting yeah so we start with a, a as you said a flat picture of what we're going to do what is going to happen <laughs> to right. your <laughs> Let's take a look at this, and we're getting we're getting ever closer to seeing the uh, the actual construction. But uh, this this bit is really important because Carol also explains about the basting and how important that is too. So now here we have our pattern all laid out. This is half of the bodice, and it consists of the lower bodice and the cups. They're the upper bodice, and you can see how intricate these pieces are and how easy it might be to get them wrong. So we've set up notches so that they sew together. Everything matches, you see there? You have to turn the pattern around, turn it upside down so that you're actually looking at it from the view of sewing it. And then, keeping that all straight, I've prepared already our lace pieces, which are going to be lined with a power net and this is how this cup is going to be sewn together. Now just a little bit about preparation. I have my power net on the underside and I've basted first of all right down the center and then I've pushed the lace out and I've basted around the edges. Any excess I've trimmed away. And then I've given it another press to make sure everything is lying flat. I've done the same thing with a center front cup. First, a basting line right down the center, pushing the lace out gently, pressing it, and then tacking it with another set of basting stitches. So this is what it's going to look like. Let's take this away. Now we know we've got our point at the bottom for the side front, we've got our point at the top for the center front, and now we're ready to sew. It's very important that you lay all this out before you sew. I know it takes a lot of time. It's time we don't see in the sewing bee. They don't have that time. But now you can see how this, this center front cup has a little bit of ease in it. So that when it's all sewn together, you're going to have your cup all nicely put together. We can just turn the seam allowances in and you can see that a little bit better. There you are. So there you are, that's the rule I used. So I don't get it mixed up, point at the bottom and point at the top. So whatever your pattern is, just try to find that relationship, where the meeting points are and how, can you, how you can remember them so that you can marry them onto the other side and you won't make any mistakes. I'm getting excited now because I can see it coming together, see it. Good, good, good. Lovely seeing that lace on, what do we call it again? Power? They call it power something. Yeah, I used a power net. Power so net. It, it's, a, it's a stable, a very stable. Um, you can use it as lining. Yeah, um, it, you can get it in different weights. This is a heavier weight, but you can get a lighter weight. It, it's just a bit more stable. And I thought, well, it's flesh color, which is all interesting when you're doing lingerie, because you, it's nice to see a flesh color. And then all you see is the lace and you assume oh. everything under, under is the body. Skaters do that. Um, they use this kind of fabric uh, in their, their costumes as well. 
it and what was lovely was seeing the pattern pieces laying on the table with you and 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 how you were then uh showing it basted and then pasting them uh on top of each other and then almost popping out so again we could see what was going to happen when we went to the sewing machine that's it absolutely so yeah. now we then we obviously go to uh the the finished the finished thing <laughs> uh, finish it off, yeah. <laughs> yes um so take a look at this and then we'll come back and we'll finish off with a close-up of of, of 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 carol's top piece there so here we are back at the machine I'm going to uh, seam these two pieces together using the same dark thread that I used in the last exercise so you can see it. I've pinned things in place and now I'm just handling the ease of this center front over the side front cup. And now you're going to be able to see how the structure is all built together. So we're done there. Trim my threads. Yes, you can see the centimeter seam here which we will then press open. And there we are. You see how that sculpture is now built in? And now let's go have a look at that on the mannequin. That was lovely watching you sew that. And thank you for choosing a different color thread because that, it just helps for us as a tutorial to, to see it, it pops out for us. Yeah, you can see the, um, the contrast and you can also see the stitch length. I think it's important to see the stitches a lot of times people are instructed to use a smaller stitch length. Well, you've got, you know, four layers of fabric. And as long as you're using the right needle and the right, uh, you know, thread, you don't really need to, you know, hammer those stitches in so tight. No. And then as we saw in the first tutorial on the elastic, if you have to unpick, you'll be grateful that your stitch length is a little longer. Oh, yes, so, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, lace is delicate, all of these fabrics are delicate, and sometimes when, if you were making a silk bra, say, um, it, when you unpick the stitches, the, the, the needle holes are going to be there, so you, you, you have to get all this, these other elements right, the needle size, the tension, the thread, all of that, but um, certainly you can see that, that most of the ease is, is in that video, it's going to be over the bust point, so you're working a bit flatter on the top, then you're working a bit flatter on the bottom, but here is where all the kind of the action is to, to build that shape. Yes, and I could see you you pinned that in, and you were as you were talking, you said there there's going to be some ease there, so like it feels like excess, doesn't it? Yes, you don't need much ease. If you no. had too much, you'd have ripples, and you don't want that. But it's just just the right amount of ease. Yeah, it is not a lot, but it it goes a long way to making that sculpture. I, I, it, is your other half filming this on a phone? I don't think our viewers have ever have ever known, but I, I'm now asking you that. Is it done on a it phone? Is, it's on an iPhone, but it's the latest one. Is it a it's iPhone 100, 109 or something? Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's, Carol, it's so good. You uh, and I've learned this in in YouTube. Sometimes you actually don't need fancy cameras. Uh, the yeah. I, the iPhones, the cameras that we have in our phones are, are just as powerful. And if not, some are more powerful with the pixels. The, 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 those close-ups there on the machine were brilliant. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And in fact, I've got an iPhone, I think, 7 or, or something like that, a 7S. And, um, you know, Mike tells me, oh, no, no, we're not going to use your phone. I'll, I'll use my phone on that because it's, it's going to be so much better. And yes. uh, gosh, the technology. So, no, you don't, you don't need fancy equipment to do this. I'm thrilled that um, you like the results. And for those people that are watching, that they can see um, exactly what's going on. Well, specifically on that video, because he did zoom in and, and we got to see your machine in action, which I always oh. love, it was so quiet. But we saw, mm -hmm. we could see the basting in there and we could then see your actual sewing stitch that uh, the machine was yeah. making. And we could see you coming around that curve and, and, and the, the ease and everything. And uh, it was, yes, it was brilliant. That's good. And I hope it goes a long way to help. That if people are, you know, frightened of lingerie or frightened of working on the intricate pieces, you know, if they see it and watch it and and just start experimenting, just start trying things. That I that that's my goal with all of this. Oh, you know? without a doubt, seeing seeing that that 
the, the power mesh or whatever you call it with the lace and seeing in action, I, it excites me to actually try and work with lace. Sure, you should, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Go um, for it. We, viewers, we've still got one more video to go. <laughs> <laughs> so there, no, because it's the, we see it in uh, finished. You, you've got it on the, on the next video. You put it on the mannequin, is that right? Right, and I'm going to show you how you can press a seam open just with pins. You don't have to take anything back to the iron. You can use pins oh. to open up the seam. So have look, a look at this. Look at that, here we go. So here we have our pieces seamed together and you can see that very pretty sculpture that we created. We haven't taken any of the seam allowances off, of course. That all needs to be finished, but you can see where that would lay. And another, just another trick, um, you can see that I've pressed the seam opened with pins. Sometimes it's a very good idea to press with pins when you have a lot of sculpture built in and you're working in a small area. You can pin the seam open, not pressing it, but just press it with pins to see how things are going to lay out. Oh, look at that. So we've gone from having a piece of lace on the table to having the, 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 a bust example on the mannequin there. And look, it's there behind you. Bring it closer, Carol, bring it closer. So can you see that, everybody? Oh. So there you are. Yeah. And those are, you know, like I said, it's not a huge amount of, of shaping in this. It's just a little bit, but it goes a long way to, look at that, to oh, creating yeah. that sculpture. Love it. And then your tip about the pins, they're the pins there, aren't they? You, the iron so you can, seam open. Yeah, you can press the seam open with pins. So you see it's it's opened. Yeah. Of, I mean, you'd have to... But that's a good way to yeah. just test what you're doing. Just press it open with pins, because you don't want to set and make too many marks in it. No. If you're happy with that, then then you're fine, and then you can, then you can press. And then, of course, all the seam allowance have, have to go in, you see. Oh, of course, yes. Well, that's, yeah, when you do the next part. Now, um, press, we see them, and Sarah made a joke about this. Oh, I think everyone's ironing their boobs. <laughs> where, where, do, where do you stand with ironing the end garment? I don't understand why they're doing it. I didn't get that either. Um, because when you steam lace, and I'm not sure what the materials they were working with, but you can upset things when you, when you steam them like that on, on the mannequin. And the mannequin was not exactly the shape. I mean, I saw that with the knickers. The mannequin was not exactly the shape of the garments that they were having to build. Um, but you can upset things and cause wrinkling. And I think it's a bit risky to do okay. that. So but you maybe they were just so you don't do that as a as a, a couturier, a, a tailor. You wouldn't, when it's finished, you wouldn't get your iron and go sh, 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 like that. Not on the mannequin, no. Right. I would press as I go. I would yeah. press as I, 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 yeah, each section I would press. And then when you get done, you need very little pressing. Yeah. Um, if you're going to photograph it, sometimes you need to do that. But I just thought that was an interesting. Um, yeah, I did too. And, and I thought, thing, it's not a bit risky. <laughs> I thought, I know someone who will know about this. And so I'm glad I got to uh, ask that. Carol, I know we say this all the time, and I say it all the time. Thank you so much. That was a lot of work there. But that has had a huge impact on me. And I'm sure the viewers are going to let us know in the comments too. Six, oh, I six wonderful yeah. videos. Thank you. You're very welcome. I look forward to the comments. I really do. So let's just have a quick squiz through the programme because we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six sewers left now. Mm -hmm. So that matching bra and knickers set, uh, I always feel slightly naughty for saying the word knickers. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Naughty is fine. <laughs> um, it was edited in a way that looked like they were all struggling, but actually the end results from all six of them, they had a finished bra and knicker set, didn't they? Yes, I mean, they did very well. Um, once they, you know, I think once they got a hang of it, I think there's a lot of cross uh, talking, you know, amongst the contestants now, you know, how are you doing this? Yes. What's that all about? And, um, the, the one thing I found was interesting is that when they were sewing on the, the hook and bar at the back, um, Christian wanted to know how that, you know, how that went on. It was right over left. As you go around the body on a woman, it, everything is right over left. But um, there, when you're sewing on, um, I don't know if I have it. Yes, I do. I saved something. Um, because um, 
you know, when you're sewing this on. Oh, yes. So you may think that, okay, I'll just sew it here, but actually this hook goes all the way back to oh. here. So you've got to be careful. And I saw, I think a couple broken needles. Ah. So you've got to be very careful because although you see this, just this little bit and it's yes. just a, a C the, shape, the it actually, that yeah. metal piece is all the way buried into here. So yeah. that's one thing to be careful about when you're, when you're finishing off your lingerie. And the thickness is one problem because you have sturdier elastic on the straps, but then that hook and, bar, that hook and bar at the back, mm. you've got to watch out for that. Um, some of them had issues, and I think it might have just been time or uh, time and speed. They put their, their straps on uh, so it was sewn on the front rather than behind. Easily yes, done. easily done, isn't it? Easily done. And again, it depends on the directions. Yeah. Were they clear? Were they clear? So um, I don't know if the contestants get to see the sample. That would help. You know, you don't you don't know, but it no, could no. All, also could be a direction thing. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I think I, I could quite easily see myself making that mistake when you're when you're putting right sides together. Oh no, what am I doing? Am I putting that on the inside? It's got to then be flipped out. I yeah, quite easily. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Are are you looking at the underside of the garment or the right side of the Indeed. garment? It's so easy yeah. to happen. Yeah. Uh, the exactly. standing order there was Jill six, Christian fifth, yeah. Deborah fourth. Broken third, Manny second, and Annie at the top. She won that with her white knicker and bra. Yes, set. yes, and and there was very little between Annie and Manny, wasn't there? I think so. They were, they were both. Yeah, yeah. Manny's well was the nice blue one, wasn't it? The sort of navy yes. blue. Yes, and I, I was surprised about the white because I, I don't know. It, it's it's very conservative to use white, isn't it? <laughs> Um, I love, I love the grey. I love Deborah's choice. Yes. Well, we've talked about Deborah many times, haven't we? Uh, it was was a nice choice, and she was the one that said she'd not used elastic before, but clearly, she, she yeah, absolutely. So maybe she, Deborah's the one that's coping with the, you know, the the problem of the direction. She's getting around the directions, yeah. and she, her artistic vision is very keen. Yeah. So. We we'll need to see what she does in round three, won't it? Um, and we all obviously talked about Jill uh, and Christian. They they had the most issues uh, of of just the, of, of construction, and as you say, that sculpturing of it. Yes. Yes. Right. Let's move on to um, anything else you want to add on that, or should we move on to the next transformation? No, let's go to the transformation. I rather like this. Yeah. The thermal sleep set, they had to turn it into a going out or a garment to go out in. Yes. What would, what would you have done? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I could have been inventive as, as Annie was wow. with her, because awesome. that was just brilliant. I thought that was a real, that for me was the best transformation of all of them. Yeah. And it was really a garment that you would wear out. I think the second one for me, in second place, I would have put Christian because that was a delightful little sundress. I thought so too. I thought that was a bit overlooked. I, I absolutely, absolutely. Um, Deborah's was interesting, but it was for me it was a bit of an endless pile up of stuff. Yes. Um, yeah. Which did work, but I would you wear that out? I don't think so. But I would, I would definitely wear the sundress, and I would definitely wear. And if I was a bit more ambitious, yes. I would wear Annie's. So that for me, I yeah. I felt a little differently than than the outcome. I completely agree, and we were saying that on uh, Unpicked with uh, Ting and Anya that Christian Christians was he explained about it, the idea of being out, you know, on the, a summer day or on a picnic and having a barbecue. You could you could see someone in that, and it just looked so. Oh floaty and summery because of the colours, oh, the pastel colours. Yes, yes, and it looked anything but a sleep yes. set. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, the, so uh, we had Jill six, uh, Manny fifth, Brogan fourth, Christian third, Annie second, and, and they put Deborah first. I can understand why maybe it was because of the bows. <laughs> <laughs> who, who knows? We can't say that, can we? we? Can't, but it, no. it was It was certainly original and, and those ruffles down the the front were, were lovely, weren't they? They were lovely. I, I'm just not sure you would wear it out. No. 
Um, if you're Jill fans, which I know we've been right from the beginning, we're now going, oh, no. <laughs> exactly. A bit of trouble there. We're yeah. feeling it. Um, but we've seen before some people have amazing made to measures and Jill That's has... It amazing made to measure yes. for um so we, we, there, there there could still still be hope so let's go into it because i think this one might be an interesting one to talk about in more detail luxury pajamas for men mm -hmm. now patrick was quite clear about what makes luxury pajamas do you do you concur with what he said about what makes luxury pajamas well i'm not sure i remember what he said was it something about luxury fabric yeah. Um, was it something about detail? It is exactly that. See, look, you know, oh, you know. Okay. He, he so, said it's all about the detailing. Okay. Um, he said it wants a luxury fabric. So we're talking silks. Yes. Satin, yeah. silk satins. Yes, exactly. Silk is interesting. Gosh, it gives you so many challenges working with silk. Yeah. I it frays. Um, it's difficult to work with, it's slippery, it's because of the, the filament that, you know, when silk is produced, that the fibres are very long. Yeah. They're very silky and smooth. And, and how, uh, as how do they go through the feed dogs, Carol? Well, you've got to, you've got to just play with that. You've okay. got to play with the, uh, the distance, you know, the pressure on the feed dog. You've got to play with it. it it's all the same. It's, it's mm. the needle. You know, you need a fine needle because you can pierce silk threads easily and then you get a zzz, you get this pull. Yes. All yeah. You've got to have a new needle. You've got to use, the, you know, a fine needle. You have to use um, not too heavy a thread. Um, your tension has to be right. Your, you know, I, I'm sure that maybe these machines have automatic tension. A lot of them do. They, they accommodate that. But there, there's just so many factors yeah. because it's a very risky fabric to work with. But if you get it right, you get the height of luxury. Yes. So, you know, so it, it's, it's quite a diva-y fabric to work with. So we've got silks then uh, that Patrick said about luxury fabrics, piping. And we've already yeah. talked about piping. We're piping masters now, we, aren't we? We know all about piping, don't we? So, yeah, absolutely. And wasn't that's, it lovely seeing that skill back again so we yeah, can see yeah. who has developed and moved on from it all? Uh, I, yeah. like, I enjoyed that. Um, yeah. And... Uh, and, and yeah, so that was what they were looking for. And we did have a lot of silks, didn't we? We had a lot of piping too, which yes. was wonderful to see. We did. And it was interesting to see how some of the contestants really used piping and did the tricky bits and how many people chose silk. Now, Deborah chose a tauter silk, a heavier silk, right? Where Christian um, and I think Annie chose very fine silks yeah so that th then those are harder con to control um but some people took the easy way out well look let me be fair some people took a more straightforward view of how to get through this competition um brogan choosing cotton yeah and not, yeah. not using piping to the full extent that she could have no it was only on um, on the on the tailored bit, it was on the bottom bit of the, I don't know what That's you call right. that lapel. It yeah, was, it was on, just on the, on the front edge, yes. up, up, up to the leaf edge, and she didn't turn into. Yeah. Um, so, and the other thing I thought of was, if you want a really luxurious men's pyjama, you need a lot of it. You need long sleeves, yeah. you need long pants, shorts. Yeah. It doesn't quite work, does it? No. They don't look right. So you need a lot of fabric. Um, you need to cover everything. So and, and I suppose luxury says it all, doesn't it? Luxury is high end, high cost. So the more fabric you have, the more cost it's going to be. You're yeah. not going to skimp by you and have uh, a, a, a short sleeve and a, and a short, as lovely as it is. No, no. The job is coming, covering up the body as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it's lovely when you see somebody walk. And everything is moving, you know, from from the neck to the yeah. ankle. Everything is moving, and it's just not the same when you do shorts. No, but I do understand the principle of a competition. And I'm, I, if that was me, I might go. I know I'm supposed to use silk, but but I don't. I've never used it. So why would I? Why would I put myself under undue pressure? I'm just going to yeah. do. A, I'm just going to do a cot. So I can completely understand that point of view as well. 
I can, but if I was going to use cotton, which was a safer bet, then I would have loaded it with detail. Right. And, and I think rather than see a short set, I might have done what Patrick said he owned in his cupboard, which was a nightshirt to the knee. Yeah. I mean, that would have been really sexy, wouldn't it? Cool. And to have a nice um, shaped hemline and, um, and just do that instead yeah. of a two piece, just do a one piece nightshirt and just really fix on the detail. I think I'm surprised nobody took that one on. Mm. And when you say uh, see them walk and see it, uh, see it move, didn't we see them move on that wonderful runway when Manise was coming down? <laughs> Um, in that lovely navy and the yes. and the and the, the burgundy and when we saw even Jill's to a certain extent when when because uh, I had a different kind of style with the with the round neck collar the sort of maybe was it Chinese influence they were saying Chinese with with just a, a button placket just at the top yeah. and a very generous um, you know hemline and longer I like Jill's uh, very much I like the contrast and I love the story of the goldfish yeah. you know. <laughs> you dream of goldfish, it's, you know, you're going to have peace and harmony in your life. And Sarah said, does it work? No. <laughs> <laughs> but the movement, it was so lovely. And we saw the movement with Christians because his was super long, wasn't it? It's this, super long, yeah. I wished he would have just pressed up the cuff. Yeah. It just pressed up that cuff and put a tack in it and, and just... <laughs> but he chose a... It, it was a bit incongruous, his contrast with the turquoise. Yeah. I think he picked up of one of the colors in the paisley but it it just you know it, it didn't work to have this glowing turquoise pocket yeah. um didn't do any favors for it um for him and i think and i think what he did was he he cut his facing and then he fused it and of course it shrunk in the fusing. Uh, so that's why it was get you and then instead of just saying okay the top, the four part, the front is now going to be longer than the facing. That's okay. We'll just shorten it. We'll just yeah. cut it off. He tried to feed it all into fit. And that's when you got that com comment. I don't know if it was wibbly. I don't know. If wibbly, it was wobbly. wobbly. Wibbly, <laughs> wobbly, which is not, it's not helpful. No. It, what, what happened is, what happened is he fused the, 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 the facing. It shrunk in that process. And then when he applied it, there were two different lengths. He should have just let the excess hem go and uh, just cut that off. And then everything would have worked, the piping and, and everything, and it would have been fine. Uh, um, Manny with the, the navy um, and, the, and the, the uh, was it the beetle? I can't remember what it was. Or, uh, um, the bee. The bee. It's got a bee on it, yeah. On, on, uh, but that piping, there was an awful lot of piping there, wasn't there? It was, and it was, it gave that ensemble such clarity yeah. between the navy and the maroon. She, she messed up the piping on the left shoulder. <clears throat> she, she had some exposed bit, which they didn't mention. Oh, um, that was a good spot. Yeah, yeah it, it's just stuck out like, you know, it was oh, really, it? <laughs> it, it didn't, she didn't bury it in to the, to the facing. No. Um, but nobody, that wasn't mentioned because the rest of it was just so, yeah. it was just such a winning formula that what was the point, you know? I don't know whether you, you can help me with this. When I was looking at hers, the pocket, under the pocket, was it just ironed badly or were they puckers? They were, or, or just creases from, from the ironing or was it just the light shining on it? It could be. It doesn't take much for the camera to absolutely over, ah. over show what's actually happening it overestimates it but I think I, I thought it was quite funny when her model was was ironing the piece because yeah. he just put the thing on the ironing board you know no. 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 he just put the whole thing and he was ironing through the front and the back at the yeah. same time it might have happened then ah uh, you know? yes of course because I panicked then I thought oh my god is he gonna have it on too hot a heat I know <laughs> Could it could be right? It's terrible to assume. We're assuming he didn't know how to iron. That's <laughs> naughty of us. I'll take that back. But I did have that panic at first. <laughs> but they were they were lovely, uh, and they were as I say. I would have had brogans on the beach any day. That was a lovely set, wasn't it? Yes, but, exactly. It was more of a day piece, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, Deborah's 
it, it kind of in between, wasn't it? With like Brogan's in short sleeve and shorts, but she had the luxury of the piping and the silk though. So balances out. Yes, and she chose a, a very safe collar pattern, which was like that one piece, like almost like a Peter Pan. Yes. Collar. So she didn't have the uh, hassle of the revere and the, and the facing and the top collar. So that was, you know, that was a straightforward way through for her. And then the short sleeves and the pocket comment. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to see it over. I would have wanted to see it up higher. Oh. I think she just moved it up. It wasn't too far out. It was just too low. Oh. So, but, but hey, that is just such a minor point. I think she did a superb job on that. And um, I think that looked probably for the short set that looked more like pajama than the other two. Indeed, indeed. Yes. And of course, I love No Coward. Who doesn't love No Coward anyway? Hey? Oh, <laughs> yes, exactly. When, when uh, she mentioned that, yeah. I thought, OK, there's Deborah. And another C word, Chanel and Coward. So <laughs> she. <laughs> <laughs> it, wonderful. When you look back at that episode, what they've asked the sewers to make, I would have been exhausted if I ever got that far. But that was exhausting uh, episode, wasn't it? <laughs> It was a tough one to watch. Yeah. It was hard work to get through that, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was almost like, oh, we need these interludes of, you know, the, the Sarah and her, you know, yeah. go go goofiness <laughs> in a very nice way. Um, but yeah, it was it, all three of those were, were big asks. And I, in coming up with a tutorial, I, I, I struggled because I thought there was so much. Yeah. Maybe that's why we ended up with five videos, Stuart, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot to talk about in this one. Um, we had Garment of the Week was Manny's Pyjamas, um, which we kind of thought was going to happen. Uh, I can understand that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we sadly, sadly had to say goodbye to Jill. We were, we were gutted, very upset, because we'd followed her from the beginning and, and she became very... You do, and, and I, I think everyone at home does, you attach to a certain contestant in any programme you do. Uh, you, you, you go along in a competition and you, you get your favourites uh, or the ones that you want, to, you know, you like seeing. And we liked seeing Jill and, and her creations, didn't we? We did. It, and it, it was fascinating for me to see how she how she coped, how she made new ways of doing things. You know, I saw her in the made to measure when she was measuring her her chap and he held the tape yeah. and then she spun him around and came to the site, you know, so she, she had to find these new ways. And, you know, you may forget yeah. um, that what she, you know, wasn't able to do. I forgot what she wasn't able to do. I, I forgot, you know. Yeah, it didn't matter, did it? I right. Absolutely. I did. I yeah. did. But, then, but then I was aware subconsciously what, what she needed to do to, to, to compensate for yeah. it. I think it, was her, I think it was her comment at the end of the program, which made me realize that she came into the process for a different reason. It, it yeah. wasn't to impress anybody but herself. This wasn't for the judges. This wasn't for the, the public. This wasn't, if she had something she wanted to challenge and she came out the other end and I thought, wow. yes. Did she? Yes. Yeah. It, it just, the tears were falling all over Great Britain, everyone, <laughs> everyone who was watching it. And yeah. I was one of them. And I think it was just, just seeing that, you know, she said, it set, this set me free. I mean, it, it just goes to the heart of what we're doing and what we are, you know, when we're creating things. Absolutely. Yeah. Well yeah. said. Can't say any more than that. Absolutely. Uh, ends up a beautiful episode, Carol. Loved every minute of it. Um, and we now head towards the, the quarterfinal. Here we go. I'm just wondering what else they can challenge these. I know. They are, <laughs> they are all exceptionally good sewers. Uh, there's, the, uh, it's just someone's going to go for probably a, a really minor reason because they've just well it'll be time orientated and and, uh, and nothing else. It's gonna oh, it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be nail biting. <laughs> so we have what we we have five left now, right? So we'll have five. Um, yes. Yeah, so we've got quarter final, and then we'll have semi final, and then we're left with the final three. Final three. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, well. I, I think anything can happen. Yeah, very much. Absolutely so. anything can happen. So I, I just look forward to next week, Stuart. 
indeed it's been a pleasure talking with you uh thanks for all those videos viewers you're going to be elastic experts or you're going to be knocking up something with elastic in let us know in the comments it's been wonderful talking with you as always carol thanks very much and we'll see you next week then indeed Stuart. all right bye bye everyone see you bye